Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another live class. It is Wednesday. I hope you all had a lovely 4th of July for those of you who celebrate it. Um, I had a lot of fun dressing my kids up in all the little colors and bows and they had fun with sparklers. But um, yeah, just welcome in, say hi, let me know where you're from, who you're painting with, if you're painting with somebody. Um, and yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go over supplies. And then we're going to go over a couple announcements, what's happening in Patreon right now. I'm really excited for Patreon content, um, but we'll get that to that in a second. And then um, we'll get to painting. Uh, just to start off, I do have a traceable and I put, I just put a couple, um, I don't know if you can even see it. Um, I didn't do it very dark. Um, just to figure out where everything is going um, I would highly recommend if you are going to be using a traceable which I have a link um, posted in the chat I also have uh, the link in the description if you're wanting to use the traceable what I would suggest for this class because it is all very dark um, I would suggest painting in um, everything like the the sky and everything but the the colorful trees on the sides that kind of covers up everything that's behind the bridge I would recommend doing that first letting it dry and then doing some sort of either um, chalk or transfer um, of, of the traceable if you want to do it that way just because it's so dark um, but I'm gonna try to figure out a way to do it uh, without doing that in this class I plan to um, paint in the bridge in black even though it's technically in white i'm going to paint it in black we're going to do the background and then hopefully i'll still be able to see um that and if not we'll just paint it in it's gonna you'll you'll know <laughs> you'll know what it is um but just for those wanting to use the traceable you can do it like i'm doing it today you can follow along um, or you can do the background everything behind the bridge let it dry and then do a transfer that way um, afterwards and yeah so it's up to you but I do have this in my patreon in case you would like it if not you can just follow along without it um, nature and things like that um, I tend to use less of the traceable just because it's nature um, but this does have a man-made element to it which requires straight lines um, and everything is kind of symmetrical so it's totally up to you what you want to use if you want to use the traceable how you want to use it um, yeah, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Um, so that's just a little snippet, um, beforehand. So that is, uh, my traceable. That's in my Patreon. Um, again, that is linked. I'm using an 11 by 14, uh, canvas, stretched canvas. So I have sides, top and bottom. I'll be painting those. Um, and then as for my colors, I have a couple different colors, um, available. I have obviously my black and my white. Um, they're upside down because they're low, um, but these are my black and white. And then I also have a, um, a brown, there's lots of browns. And then I have a couple different colors of oranges and yellows. Um, it kind of just depends on what you want the trees to look like, what kind of um, environment 
if you want it to be kind of fall, which is kind of what this one is, um, it's very fall, oranges and yellow colors, um, then feel free to paint along in those colors. If you have a reference photo that maybe you took of these falls um, that you're painting, feel free to tailor it towards that. Um, if you took it in the spring or the summer, I'm sure the leaves would be a little bit different. Feel free to make it your own. Um, but yeah, so I have just orange, um, medium yellow, and then a yellow ochre. Um, and then the only other color that I would suggest having on hand if using the same colors as me is maybe like a blue um, to give, just to kind of help like change the hue of different things. Um, but we'll see. I think I think we'll probably just use these colors though. Um, so not a whole lot of colors. And if you don't have a yellow ochre, that's totally fine. You can mix your yellow and your brown. Um, so you you really don't even need that. That's just a, I have it on hand, so I might as well use it. Um, and the specific brown that I'm using is burnt umber. Um, my favorite is raw umber, uh, but I'm out of it right now. And I keep forgetting to get more. Somebody needs to remind me. Don't forget to get your brown. <laughs> um, I'll remember next time I'm at Hobby Lobby, but anyways. Uh, yeah, so those are the colors. And don't be fooled by the bottles. They are not craft acrylics. They are full body professional acrylics from Hippie Crafter. Um, so they're not like the liquid kind. They're the full body thick acrylics. All right, so let's go over some brushes. I have my typical brushes that I typically will use in all my classes, or at least I have available for all my classes. I have a large filbert. I also have a medium sized filbert and then I have three round brushes. One um, is a little bit of a more round tip. The other one is more of a pointed tip. And then I have a liner brush. So those are the, those are my go-tos for all of my classes. And then for this specific class, depending on what kind of leaves you wanna do um, and how you wanna do that, I have a couple um, hog bristle uh, fan brushes that are going to be uh, a lot of fun to use during this class. So if you have one of those, that would be great. If not, you can do uh, leaves and that sort of thing with filberts. I find it, um, we'll probably be using filberts for some of the top taller trees. Um, but yeah, just uh, have fun with it and yeah, let's get started. We also have, I also have my water, my palette, and my um, paper towel, and then I have this scraper for cleaning my palette, uh, as well as um, a palette knife for mixing colors. So those are kind of like the tools um, that you don't need, but if you want. Um, another nice tool to have for this class specifically because of straight lines and stuff, if you would like to grab some tape, some painter's tape, that might be helpful in getting those straight lines. Um, I mostly put this in with the traceable so that I could see where everything was um, in terms of, of just spacing and stuff. Um, but if you're wanting to get those straight lines while we're painting, using tape is a good um, aid for that. Uh, you can also use a ruler, um, so I do have a ruler kind of, you know, in my back pocket in case I want to use that as well, okay? Um, so go ahead and use a pencil very lightly. Go ahead and draw on um, where you kind of want everything. Um, so I have this main line that kind of comes down here. This is the top of um, that ridge where the waterfall comes down. And I lightly put in where the waterfall is just so I could you know, make sure that it was all centered. You don't have to do that though. And then I did put in the bridge. So I just did a couple straight lines um, as straight as I could because this is just the, you know, the rough draft. It's not you know, set in stone right now. Um, but I did put in that um, ahead of time just so I can make sure that everything was correctly um, placed. Uh, so go ahead and do that now. Um, again, I have my traceable if you would like it. If not, go ahead and draw it on. Um, I'm sure it'll look lovely either way. Um, while you're doing that, I'm going to go over a couple announcements and just what's going on um, around my channel and around my page. Um, last week, we did this lovely painting. 
Um, it was a lot of fun. Somebody asked me um, on my channel like what these were and it didn't even dawn on me. I'm like, well, of course they're their hands, but somebody else who's just looking at it for the first time might not. No, they're like, is that a scarf? Like, what is that? Because they look like hands, but they're shorter. And what you might not realize is because it's like kind of out to the side, it's gonna look shorter. So, um, but I just thought that was um, interesting because I was like, oh, I never would have even thought that. Um, but yeah, so this was really fun. We did two coats of the pink sky and the first coat looked like okay, but doing the second coat really helped. So if you are ever doubting whether or not a second coat will look good, just do the second coat. It, it'll look better. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to do some fun um, bright colored sunset, this one was a really, really fun one. Um, and we did that last week. It's free on my channel. Um, feel free to go and uh, paint that. Um, now I haven't painted um, I haven't painted this month's Patreon class that's going out next week. Um, but last month we painted this one and it was super, super cute. I loved painting it. Um, so if you like painting birds um, or cute animals or feathers or want any, any anything like that, um, this was a really fun one to do. So if you're in Patreon, it's at the magenta tier level. Um, and you'll also get access to all of my other Patreon tutorials as well within that level. So have a look at it, go have fun, go paint it. Um, and I can't wait to see it. I will be posting, um, I'll be next week. I'll have my other, um, class that is for this month and it's a, um, cherry blossom, like bouquet in a vase. And it's really, really pretty. I can't wait to paint it. Um, but yeah, I'll have that. I'll have that for next week, um, to show you guys. Um, uh, but yeah, and then lastly, in my cobalt tier, we finished this last month, um, and I just, I, it's so pretty. I love it. Um, on my camera, these look a little bit more red than in person. In person, they're very much, very pink, um, but yeah, it's one of my favorites so far. It's really pretty. Uh, but yeah, so if you want to paint that, that's also in my uh, Patreon. I didn't, we didn't start painting the cobalt class because yesterday was a holiday and let's be real, I just wasn't here. <laughs> I wasn't in the office, I wasn't here um, doing anything because it was a holiday and we were out in parties and stuff like that. So, um, but we will be starting a turtle next month. So if you are not on my Facebook page, please go over there and follow me. That is where I post the majority of everything. Um, including what's coming up in the like the coming months. Um, I sometimes pay, post that on um, YouTube as well, like the picture, but I sometimes forget on YouTube. Um, so, but it definitely gets posted on my uh, Facebook. So please go over there and follow me on Facebook because that is you will get all of the event. And there's also I make like Facebook events too for all of my classes, so you can share them with friends, and it's really easy to. Um, pass them along if you plan on going to them. So make sure you go over there and follow me. Um, and then you can see what's, you know, what's going on Patreon too. Um, okay, I believe that is all of my announcements. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we are gonna start by doing um, the sky so we're going to make a very very light almost gray color um, now if you have your blue out like i suggested you can add just like a, like a touch of um just a touch of uh blue in it and it will create just a very light um grayish blue color but try not to add too much or else it'll like overwhelm It'll definitely overwhelm it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm just going to grab the tiniest bit of blue here. And then I'm mostly going to have my white. And I'm going to get out my black. And that's going to make up the sky. What's nice is the sky is pretty much all one color, so we're not going to have to do any like mixing or anything like that. 
um, in terms of like, uh, sorry, not mixing. We're not gonna have to do any uh, like blending. It's all just kind of one color. All right, so I'm gonna take this white, a good chunk of white, the tiniest blue and the tiniest black. And we're just going to mix this together, see what we come up with. And even this I think is probably too dark, but it would probably look nice. If you don't have a flat palette that you can mix with your palette knife on, I highly recommend it. I will never go back. I love um, everything about being able to pre-mix colors um, and it's super easy to clean. I used to have a plastic one that I used to like used to use and if I didn't clean it right away, it would just get like like actually stuck on and I would spend like half an hour just soaking it and trying to scrub it off. It was just a waste of time, but this is so much nicer. All right, uh, so now that I have my color, I lightened it up with white just a smidge. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my large brush, whatever brush you would like to use for the background. I use a larger filbert, but if you have a flat brush or whatever you wanna use, that's fine too. I'm gonna grab it grab some water and just kind of um, dab it off so it's not soaking wet and I'm just going to fill in this area with all of, oops sorry I just touched the mic <laughs> this should probably be closer to me anyways making sure I get the top and the sides. Those are very easy to forget. So what you can do after you're done getting all of that paint on there is just go all the way across it and nice even strokes. And that'll make sure that you don't have any clumps. Um, it'll get rid of any um, markings that might be there from your brush. Um, and that will, that'll help. All right, so I'm gonna rinse this out. Dry it off a little, cause now we get to mix um, our color on, um, we get to mix our colors for the, um, the background, the kind of the wall. Um, let's see, um, let me do a painting on my card table, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I didn't realize this was a free tutorial, I would schedule it and turn on my alarm, yes, so I have free tutorials every Wednesday, um, there's only a few that I have exclusively for my Patreon, the rest of the ones that I have um, are free on YouTube, so 
Um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some black because I want this black to dry by the time I get to it. So I'm gonna paint color in black and then that will dry while we mix up our brown. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my black out. I already have some black. I'm going to grab my tape just to make this process a little easier. I'm just gonna put my tape down kind of where I already have marked it. Gotta make sure it's flat. Oops. All right. So I'm doing the top and then I'm also doing um, the bottom edge like the bottom of the straight edge so here let me show you there's like this let's see right here So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my black with a, a liner brush. And you can do this with a smaller brush if you want. It doesn't have to be a liner brush. And I'm going to make a line just on the top, like the, the bottom edge of the top one. And this will give me a straight line just to just so I know where the top of the um, where the top of the bridge is. I'm gonna put in those two main um, poles. In black and granted, this is not gonna stay black, but this is. This is just the color so that when we start painting in everything else, I'll be able to kind of see where everything is. And again, if you're not painting live with me, I would suggest just doing the background, finishing all the background, and then doing some type of transfer um, to put your bridge on top of everything. This is pretty much just for those who are painting live with me. And if you're not painting live with me, you could still do this process. Um, I just think it would probably be easier to do it the other way. And then I'm going to, on the top part of the bottom piece of tape, I'm going to do a bit thicker thicker piece and I'm going out further than what I see um, because that's just what um, that's what I'm doing um, I'd rather go out too far than not far enough. And then lastly, just so I can tell where this is going, I'm going to that little arch. Um, there is a black part of that arch that I'm going to follow. Which you can't really see it once you get down um, this far, but that's okay because most of that will be covered up by something else anyways. 
probably black, to be honest. And if you want tips on how to um, keep control of your brush, um, I put my fingers on my easel and then I rest my painting hand on that hand so I can really have better control over where my brush is instead of just trying to paint it without that and like not having any control over it. Because you can use that hand to help assist your um, your painting hand okay so there's that you probably will only see about you know this much of it but I kept going just so that um, so that I can kind of see where everything is once we get into it okay so that is good. That's enough. That's enough for me to, um, when I come back to it and when we come back to everything, um, for me to know where everything is. Okay, so now we get to make our brown. Now we're going to do kind of the mid tone brown first, and then we'll darken certain areas, and then we'll add. Um, we'll add our texture, which you can do um, one of two ways. You could use a palette knife or you can just use stippling with, with a brush um, or, even a, um, or even a sponge if you want, whatever you have on hand. Um, you can be able to have you know that texture on the rock, but it totally, it's up to you um, how you wanna do that. For now, I'm just gonna focus on making the brown color which we're gonna have this brown. I'm going to mix in the black and then I'm also gonna mix in, um, I have the rest of this like blue gray that I don't really want to throw away. So I'm gonna put that in there. It's mostly white, there's just a tad bit of blue but it's not gonna make that much of a difference in this case. So I might as well use that and not waste paint. Okay, so I do need more black though. I really like this color. So again, the three colors that are in this one is just your black, white, and brown. And then obviously I used the rest of my like bluish gray, um, which doesn't, it's mostly just white. It doesn't have that much blue in it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and use this brown as my like undercoat, my first coat of brown. Make sure that your brush isn't too wet because you don't want to like overwhelm um, your paint with water because then it will be translucent. I'm just gonna go all the way over to the left and even though most of this is covered with um, black and dark colors I'm still gonna put it in because trees sometimes um, you can see through trees and you just want to cover it cover it all up in case um, you don't cover it all up with black in your trees
right, so I'm just going to fill in this whole space. And what I'm going to do for this water part is I'm just going to dilute the paint. Just so I can see, okay, this is where it is. And we're going to cover it up with, you know, white and stuff. But it's good just to get that first coat on, even if it's... A color that's not necessarily um, what it's going to be initially. Alright, so as I get to um, the middle, as I get to the middle, you can go ahead and grab a little bit of black. And mix it in with that brown especially here where the like it kind of gets a little bit darker and if you do this while it is um, wet it makes it so much easier to um, to blend in And as I'm moving out, I'm going to start adding black instead of my brown. And you can mix that in by going in circles. You can go back and forth. You can do your crisscrosses. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to start adding some black. And this is the point that you look at me as a teacher and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Why does it look so bad? This is what I like to call the ugly stage. It is okay. Don't freak out. It's not going to stay like this. Every painting, well maybe not every painting, I would say like 98% of paintings go through what I call the ugly stage. Um, and I know other, other artists use that term too. Um, it's just the part of the painting that's just like, you just want to give up. You're just like, what am I doing? This doesn't look good. It's not anywhere close to what I want it to be but let me tell you this it is necessary 
it is necessary for your painting to go through this stage so that it can look like what you want to. You have to get this first stage, you have to get this first step um, on your on your painting or, or on your canvas because otherwise you'll never get to the next stage, you know. So notice that I'm, I'm putting dark on here, but I'm paying attention where my lines are and I'm trying to be really intentional with not covering them, covering them up any more than I need to um, because I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose it. And this is why I say that if you are painting it um, either after the live or you want to paint the background first and then, you know, you can just watch the rest of the live and then wait till it's done um, because this is the part where it's like you can barely see the bridge um, and I want you guys to be able to paint with confidence so it's easier just to paint everything behind it first without having to worry about um, about that sort of thing without having to worry about covering anything up So this is a great first stage to our um, to our mountains. We haven't put any detail on it, so it's okay that it looks like this. All right. So what we are going to transition to next, we are going to go ahead and put in all of the um, all of the trees that are on top of this little ridge. And we're gonna use our black. And then maybe I do need a little bit of green. Do black and like a touch of green. I think this photo technically has like a filter on it. So if you wanted to just do black, I'm sure it'll look great. Um, I like trying to figure out what color things actually are, not just what I think they are. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit of green to my black, but it's probably going to be mostly black anyway, so. Okay, so I have this color. And what I'm going to do is I'm first going to kind of put in all of the trunks and figure out where everything's going to be first. Um, and then I can kind of fill in all of the leaves afterwards. So I'm using a liner brush. with a little bit of water.
and let's see I'm gonna do a couple of these and just because you don't have a um, like a, a line or a trunk there doesn't mean you can't put bushes so I'm just putting mainly the ones that like kind of stand out to me as like trees Or maybe I like can see the trunk through the trees. All right, so that's pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my filbert brush, my smaller one, and I'm going to kind of use a Bob Ross technique of just adding my little lines to it. So if it helps, um, you can dab on your palette before you ever put it on your canvas. So I start at the tip and I kind of add that and then I turn my brush flat and I just kind of work my way down getting bigger and bigger. You can add some bushes at the bottom.
right, so this one specifically is a tree that's like in front of the ridge, so it's a little bit darker and it comes down a little bit further. Um, but that's pretty much all we're going to do because we still have to do um, the ridge, uh, like all the texture on that part. So now that we have all those trees done, um, let's go ahead and put some texture on the rocks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a palette knife because that's what I'm comfortable with. If you want, you can just use um, some stippling with uh, your favorite stipple brush uh, or uh, you can use a sponge. Um, here, I'll show you how to use a sponge during this um, and then I'll probably add some texture with a palette knife. Uh, so let's go ahead and make our color first, uh, especially while all that green, blackish green uh, dries. So let's go ahead and grab some more brown. We're gonna make essentially the same brown, but it's going to be um, a lot lighter. So probably don't need that much brown, so I'm gonna do that. All of this white and then a little bit of black. Um, I'm in the car right now, not the driver. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh -huh. And just join Magenta Level. Oh, okay, cool. Looking forward to learning with you. Yeah, welcome aboard. I have, um, I think for your level, I have 54 or 55 um, different exclusive classes for you. Um, so have fun looking around and yeah, and you'll you'll have access to um, all of those as well as this month's tutorial. So that will be a lot of fun. Okay, so I think I need a little bit. So I need to gray it out more, which means I need to add black. Um, and white to it because I, I don't want it to get too much darker but I need it to be more grayed out. Grab some white and I'm adding my color into it. See if that would be, work better. All right, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a little bit of texture um, with some black and this kind of lighter color. So I'm gonna grab a sponge, looks like this. Um, I'm going to grab some of this lighter color and some black, and I'm just going to sponge. I'm just gonna sponge it on. And I want it in like all different, um, all different, places I'm gonna use 
some black to sponge up here. And with this sort of rock, we want it to be all like uneven. So if you did use a sponge, make sure that you rinse it out or you go wash it out right away because if you don't, then all of that uh, paint will get stuck in all of those fibers and it just it won't come out. Um, so make sure that you at least rinse it out and get it all wet so that it doesn't dry out um, before you're finished with the class. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, um, a brush that I'm okay with kind of it um, getting a little bit, uh, I wanna say ruined, um, but this brush specifically I use a lot for clouds. Um, so I don't know if you can tell, but like the end, these parts of it um, are, I don't know where. <laughs> You can't really see because the light. Um, it's really hard to tell. Uh, you can kind of tell there. It's not necessarily like straight, um, but like it's got like pieces that are like kind of flaring out. And um, I definitely do not use it when I want to get like a clean, um, like teardrop because it's just. Anyways, I I, I don't want to say I don't care about the brush because I do because I use it all the time. Um, but it's specifically my brush that I kind of um, rough, up, rough up a little bit. Um, so I'm going to get that brush, get a little bit of um, my black. And I'm just going to, in these places that kind of have a little bit more of like shadow, I'm going to go ahead and put that part in. And you can now kind of start putting in a little bit more of this darkness around where you're going to put your where you're going to put your uh, your water. And you can see I'm being pretty rough with this brush because it's it's um I like to call it my dry brush my dry brush brush because I don't have I don't have very much water on my brush if at all um, this is all this is all dry brushing I'm just going straight from paint into um, onto the canvas.
All right, so it is at this moment where I'm going to get some white and a smaller brush. And I'm gonna start slowly putting in my, my bridge. Even if it's just little pieces here and there, because this is part where like, I'm like, okay, I can't, I'm starting to not be able to see it very much. So I'm going to use what I have. I'm going to put a a light colored line right under the dark colored line that I already have there. And just continue that line all the way out. And that gives me kind of a new sense of direction of where everything is, which is great. I'm actually going to And just for the sake of my picture, I'm actually going to get my brush wet and redo this one and just move it over ever so slightly. Because where I've done my arch, um, It makes more sense um, for the other piece to be. Let's see, if this goes down, right there, this goes down, right there. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and continue with um, dry brushing in my black, um, kind of my black spots.
perfect. And then I'm also going to um, make sure that there is dark on either side of the um, on either side of the where the water will be. <clears throat> and then there's also some darkness at the top. So now that we got that, as you can see, it's starting to look a little bit more, <laughs> it's starting to look a little better. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my palette knife and I'm going to take some of this and I'm just going to, <clears throat> I'm going to put in just some texture. And what's great about this is that if you get too much, you can always just get your brush and just take some off, right? You can add it with a brush. You can add it with, um, you can add it with a different brush. Um, and you can always come back, let, let's say that, um, um, for me, this is too bright, and I know that. If I don't like that, I can come back with a clean brush, grab some water, and just dampen it, and take some of it off, okay? So there's ways that you can fix things um, if you're in a position where you're like, well, I don't really like that. Um, Let's see. I'll come back. Just reapply it a little bit. And I'm gonna come back to that. So most of that what happened is that it was too it was much too bright. So it really overwhelmed um, the the side of the mountain. So what I have to do is I have to take this now and I have to, I'm going to add some black and brown and darken it up a little bit. I also think I have to make a little bit of a darker version. I think I'm going to take off even more of this.
right, so that looks better. I'm going to grab a stipple brush. I think instead of doing the palette knife, because the palette knife is really great for putting on a lot. Sometimes it's really hard to get a little. Um, I love using the palette knife, but I don't know if I want to use it for this specific one. I'll use it for the top, I think. I'm gonna get out a stipple brush that, or it's not a stipple brush, but it's something that I like to use for stippling. And I can be a little bit more controlled in it. And part of using this color is not overdoing it and still having some of those dark colors show through. And with a brush, I can be a little bit more um, controlled, I think. It's part of the problem I think I was having with the, um, with the palette knife. All right, so I'm just going to put this in a couple different spots. All right, so I'm gonna come back in with some 
some black and kind of put in some of these low lights again. Once it's all dry, then we can add a little bit more um, depth with our black. Um, for now, I think we can move on to the water, which I'm really excited for. So I'm going to grab my small filbert brush, make sure it's rinsed out and clean. And I'm just going to I'm just going to pull it down from the top. I do have a little bit of um, water in my brush. So that by the time it gets down to the bottom, it's a little bit more airy. And we're gonna add this in a bunch of different layers. a little bit of water. And I'm going to add a little bit more of that airy, um, airy water like the, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more watered down. on the right side. And if something has too much uh, white on it, we can come back in with a clean brush and take some out. So I just looked and saw that um, that I needed more green up here to have that contrast between the water and the sky because there wasn't anything and the top of the waterfall was getting lost. So I just added a little bit of green to that area of that black green. I'm going to put a little bit more of the translucent water. All right, then you're also going to do what's called, I like to call it a flame um, because you, you're going up, you go out, 
and then you come back in you're almost doing little flames is what I kind of like to view them as That's just kind of how the water falls. And then you're just gonna add a couple different like markings of bright white. And then you're just gonna brush up and down and kind of blend it all in. And there you go. You have your waterfall. The trick to this is just layers, layers, layers. Add your layers in very um, light amounts. And what I mean by light is very, um, very light in terms of opaqueness. Um, make sure that it's got um, Um, make sure that it's got that water in it so that it, it's very like see-through essentially All right, I'm gonna go back with my black and do one more kind of coating of my detail in here there's a couple like rocks and um, things in the light parts just different markings in there you can make it random you can make it as realistic as you want
add a little bit more black in here. Okay. Alright, so now that we have that, let's go ahead, um, I'm going to finish off my bridge, um, which is a lot of just kind of fine detail. Um, I'm trying, I'm going to try not to spend too much time on it, um, but it is the focal point of our whole painting. Um, so what I would say the easiest way to do this um, is to... do the little markings and then make them round on top. So let me let me show you what I mean. I'm going to get my liner brush. and do this first line. I think I might add just a little bit of this kind of grayish brown to it just so it's not stark white. <laughs> um, okay. And I'm just going to, let's see, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm just gonna do lines down the middle. I'm going to try to keep them as consistent as possible. I'm just going to, as much as I can, make it round at the top of each one of those squares. Might be easier with a normal brush. So that's good. That's good enough. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Except I'm going to add a little bit more gray to it.
just make them round at the top. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to take some black and fill in the black parts of it. So for instance, there is a black line on top of the very top of the railing. There's also a thicker line on the bottom. And then there's a line underneath. There's a little black line that connects the two um, black pieces in the very, very middle.
and then there's one last thing um, and this is done in white for the bridge um, there are um, little wooden pieces or I don't know if it's metal, I'm guessing it's wooden, that go, um, there's beams that go from this bottom piece to the underside of the top piece. is pretty much it for the bridge. If about 15 more minutes um, we should be able to get done in that amount of time I'm going to take my larger round brush and I'm going to um, I'm going to grab some black I'm going to grab some black and I'm going to put in some of these um, trees And you can do this one of two ways. You can go up and go thick to thin, or you can start at the top if you're more um, confident in your strokes of going thin to thick. Um, I I like to do both. It just depends on um, it depends on what I'm painting and where I'm painting it. For instance, I want to um, I want to know like where they're starting, like. Um, I don't really care where they end up in terms of over here because it gets darker, but I want to know where my pieces are going to um, lay. So that's more important to me in this. Um, so that's what I'm starting with. over here do this one can't really see it but that's okay
right. I'm going to start off by adding some black in the form of leaves just to get some dark on there and then we'll come in once that's dry we'll come in with um, our lighter colors. Um, if you have any of your like green left, you could do that with um, your green instead. And I am using a fan brush for this part. And if your corners aren't black by now, um, make sure that you cover them with your um, black texture. And that will really help this just fill in with that black. I realized I forgot to go back in with my white on this part. Because they're also black on the top. So while that all dries, I'm going to go ahead and make some space on my palette for some um, oranges and yellows and things like that. So I'm going to rinse out my brushes. Some of this. Let me 
using this green anymore. And I'm going to move this brown. Like one of my favorite things about this palette is I can clean it like in the middle of class and I don't have to take it um, I don't have to take it away in order to clean it okay um, let's go ahead and do let's see all right we're gonna make two colors and honestly one I feel like is my yellow ochre, so I feel like I'm not even going to have to make that color. And then my other color, I'm going to do yellow ochre with a little bit of orange in it. And actually, before I do that, I do think I want to add like just a, a tinsy bit of green. So I'm going to do um, the rest of my green that I have here. A little bit of this brown and I also need black So I made like a dark green. I'm going to put a little bit of this green um, in here just because I feel like it needs it. At least on the right one. I don't really see any green on the left one. Maybe there's like a little bit right here, but. Okay. Um, I'm going to focus now on um, just mixing this orange and I think I am going to add just a little bit of like a gray to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of white and black to the um, my regular yellow ochre. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of white and a little bit of black to my orange version of that. just to soften the brightness of it just ever so slightly. I still want it to be bright, but I don't want it to be that bright. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this um, and I'm actually going to add more black to it so that it's kind of like in the background. This is what's like in the shade. Cause you gotta have that contrast. If it's all one color, it's going to get lost. And 
I'm going to take a little bit of this bright color and do the same, the yellow color, and do the same thing. Okay, that should be enough. I'm going to take my silver or my fan brush and I'm just going to um, put what's like in the back put a little bit down here start putting that brighter color right on the edge here After I put a couple of this in, I'm going to come back over it <clears throat> with some black. So I'm going to go into that orangey kind. put a couple a couple pieces in there that are just bright and stick out I'm just going to take a couple pieces. Essentially, you want you want there to be color kind of everywhere, but you only want certain parts. You only want certain parts to stand out and be super colorful. And before I add any more, I'm going to go back in with my black. put these back in and on this 
this side. adding texture and don't cover up all your black don't cover up <clears throat> all your dark you need that contrast Alright, so I'm just putting it kind of where I see it in the, in the reference, where I feel like there might be a hole somewhere. I'm um, just kind of trying to make it all um, be cohesive and anywhere where I feel like there just should be a little bit more color. And honestly, I think it's looking pretty great. And I honestly, I think we're done. I think I'm done. So yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this process. Um, I look forward to seeing yours. If you are not yet a part of my um, artist community, please go head over to Facebook. That is where you're going to find my artist community. It's just Samantha Anderson artists, um, Samantha Anderson's artist community over on Facebook. I'll go ahead and post a link for you right now. Um, this is where you can share your artwork, your live classwork, art challenges, Patreon classes, um, everything that you do, um, with me. Um, that is where you will find us. Um, you can go into the album section and you can see literally every album. I have a different class. So whether it's on Facebook, Patreon, um, wherever I've taught it, if it's available online, whether um, paid or free, it will have an album and you'll be able to go and see them all. Um, you'll be able to go add your photo. Um, so if you painted this with me, I would love to see it. Um, that's like one of my favorite things about doing these is being able to see your, all your guys' work. Um, so please don't, um, don't forget to do that. Okay. Um, and all, it also encourages other people, um, if they see other painters like themselves, 
um, posting their work and encourages them to go be creative as well. So thank you so much for joining me. If you like this content, make sure to like and subscribe uh, so you don't miss any notifications of when I go live as well as I'm trying to reach... Um, I think 7,000 or 10,000. I'm not, I don't remember what I'm at right now, um, but I'm trying to reach the next goal of uh, subscribers for this year. So if you haven't subscribed yet, um, please do. I really would enjoy it um, as well as it tells other people that they might like the content too. Uh, so yeah, thank you for joining me and we will see you next week. Have a great rest of your night. Bye guys. Soon as I find the outro, there we go. Bye guys.